Hey y'all, it's Diana from the Dianaverse, here today to do your Sagittarius new moon forecast. First of all, happy birthday to all the Sagittarians out there who have birthdays going on. Hope you're having a very inspired return, uh, solar return. Back in cold and drippy Seattle, which I actually like, so um, not in the hot sunny Florida anymore. And we have a lot of fiery energy going on, right? This is the most Sagittarius part of this year. So we have both the sun and the moon in Sagittarius. The new moon is when the moon is so close to the sun that you really can't see it. It's, it's in the same uh, plane of vision from our point on Earth. And so you don't see reflected light. It's just there with the sun. We also have Mars uh, sandwiched with the sun and the moon in Sagittarius. So a lot of idealism, a lot of higher thoughts, a lot of plans and passion to carry things out. Uh, today, actually, uh, Mars is sandwiched between that moon and sun before the moon quite gets to the sun. So it's getting kind of a hug from the sun and the moon, the two luminaries. Um, the two lights uh, that are closest to us in this uh, are not closest. Yeah, I guess it is the closest because the sun is a light and the moon is a light and the planets are not lights. Partic you know, they reflect light. Anyway, I digress with that. <laughs> so moving on. Um, the new moon, uh, traditionally, people think of it as a time to set intentions. We've been going through a cycle this year where most of the new moons are at the end of the sign. And that is still the case this month. That uh, new moon that we're having, I believe, is at 20 degrees, 20 degrees in some minutes, whatever. Um, so it's there's 30 degrees in uh, each sign on the astrological wheel. So we're still fairly much towards the end. We're slowly moving forward. Uh, Kind of forward where the new moons will uh, begin to be at the beginning of a cycle again but we've got a ways to go before we get there so my reason i'm pointing that out is that this particular new moon is kind of like the dark before the new moon like each month as we go around that cycle with the moon from the new moon to the quarter moon to the full moon to the waning quarter moon back to the new moon there's a point right before the new moon it's kind of like the dark night of the soul and that's kind of what this new moon is in and for me um, the way to work with that energy uh, because and I say this for the year I'm doing one of my convoluted explanations here so I hope y'all are able to stay with me but for the entire year, the summer solstice will be like the new moon because that's the darkest day. It's the darkest part of the sun. Um, so it's like the new sun, I guess you would call it. But the easiest way to explain it is, an, is it's like a new moon where the light is the least strong. And so despite Sagittarius kind of being the season of the festival of lights for many different cultures, this particular new moon uh, happening late in the sign as it is and uh, just you know a week or two before the um, I didn't measure that exactly but close to the summer, uh, summer <laughs> the winter solstice sorry y'all tripping over my words a little bit you can tell that mercury's about to go retrograde right it started for me at least a week ago so we're coming to that point that's kind of the dark night of the soul. And this is like a pause. And it's a pause in the year because it's right before the darkest day of the year, the winter solstice, before the light returns. We're in sort of this dark, uh, part of the energy where things can become ideas that become manifest later as we get to the summer solstice when we're at the apex of the year. Oops, come back here. I've got my uh, chart up on my computer there. And so 
although it's the season of lights and Sagittarius is full of hope and idealism and with that Mars there, there's the passion to get things done. There's a lot of inner work that needs to be done with this. This is more like germinating things inside of our soul so that we're really clear on what we're bringing forward. We're testing it by fire during this light, right? So you want to take time, not necessarily to push things through. Um, and this is also because right after the full moon tomorrow on Tuesday, the following day on Wednesday starts our Mercury retrograde officially. Like right now we're in the shadow, but it will officially move into retrograde that day. So whatever it is that our passions are bringing up, whatever our goals and our desires are, um, our fiery nature of ourselves, and everyone has Sagittarius in their birth chart somewhere. So you want to look at your birth chart to see where what house this falls in for you and if you aren't used to working with astrology this is like a new concept for you uh, i'll put a link below but you can go to places like astroseek.com or astro.com and you can get free uh, natal charts that will show you exactly where your things were at birth it helps if you want to see where it is in the houses like what house it is for you you're going to want to um, have your birth time to plug in there because uh, it's really just dependent on that uh, the ascendant kind of sets the beginning of your natal chart and you only know the descendant if you know what time of day you were born. So you want to see where that falls for you. For me, it's at my midheaven in the 10th house. So career. And I, like I mentioned in my last video, I'm working a lot on new work ideas. So, um, hopefully this is bringing auspicious ideas. I realize that I have not got my things uh, ready for market quite yet, even though I'm doing a show in, uh, I'm doing St. Distaff Day up in Burlington in early January. And hopefully I will have something on my table, but I am working on those plans. I'm working on various projects for that. So this is like the archer, Sagittarius is that archer, the centaur. He's drawing back his arrow and he's about to shoot, right? So so we're getting all of our um, brightest ideas together and uh, we won't be quite ready to maybe shoot that arrow, but that's because we're taking the time to aim it carefully during the retrograde, during the dark part of the year. Uh, some other things that we have going on astrologically, we have Venus in Scorpio. So this is, this is sexy Venus, right? Sure, she's uh, in the kind of her uh, scorpionic phase, she's pulling things in. Venus attracts things. And she's in a relationship or she's in a conversation with Mercury, who is in Capricorn. Now, Capricorn is an earth sign. So that's about practical things, building stuff in the world, um, concrete things in the world and he is having a very harmonious conversation with this Venus, the sexy Venus in uh, Scorpio who wants to get to uh, things that mean more to her, right? She's like, don't give me the junk jewelry. I want the diamonds right now, right? She wants the real stuff. So this can help you, this energy can help you attract things in. If you can communicate like concretely, like a real plan, um, you have a great ability at this time to draw things in. Another aspect that's going on is Neptune just went to, uh, direct last Friday. So going direct, now our imagination is unleashed. Uh, all that watery energy um, can work with that watery energy of Venus and Scorpio. Um, let me, this is where I wanted to look at my chart because I can't remember everything. But Neptune is in a great aspect to uh, the moon. So the moon sometimes is considered like the people uh, because it's the body. It can be the body of humanity. So uh, our imagination can run wild with uh, what we would like to feel what makes us feel 
safe in the world. Um, it's also connecting with Uranus, so this can be very sudden changes. Um, I just want to point out that these are all the very positive manifestations of Sagittarius and um, that optimism uh, ruled by Jupiter, making things big. But the shadow side of that can also be, especially conjoined with that Mars that's right there, can be uh, martial energy like warfare, sudden uh, attacks or arguments. So you want to kind of be aware of that, that you don't project any negativity you have, any fear that you have uh, onto other groups of people. Um, we all can see what that's doing in the world. It's not pretty. It's not nice. So um, take that time to reflect before you take action on things that um, what you're imagining is good for everyone. This particular new moon happening on the 12th is going to also be on the feast day of uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? Um, if you're familiar with that story in the Americas, this was when a uh, Mexican gentleman, Luis, I forgot his name, sorry. Um, but he had a vision, the, Vir the Virgin Mary appeared to him and there are very famous paintings you can find all over the internet. I'm going to post something, but it's not as much the traditional painting. But she's emanating light. And that just so goes with the Sagittarius new moon, Sagittarius season. And that's her inner light that's projecting out. Her, her love, her devotion, her purity. So you want to make sure whatever it is that you're building in the world, whatever it is you're imagining, it's coming from a really heartfelt place. Um, because you're going to put that light onto the world, whatever it is you're planning. So make sure you're going with your passions. The things that really matter to you um, are the things that you want to uh, both emanate and draw in. Uh, this could be also, the moon can be like your tribe, right? So you're, you're looking for the people who are on that same wavelength with you. Not that we forget about the people who uh, have opposing points of view, um, I think it's really important in the world right now for us to all dialogue. One of the things with the Virgin of Guadalupe when she appeared was that she appeared as a native looking person. And so it was kind of this um, rainbow bridge between the old culture adjusting to include the new culture. Um, and a lot of that wasn't pretty either, right? Because Although some of the ideals might have been there, there were also some pretty uh, dark things that came along with that. So um, be aware of any shadow side of yourself or who you're working with. And uh, like I said, we want to keep a dialogue. We want to keep that bridge going with people we don't agree with. But it needs to come from the heart in a way where we can understand each other and create something positive, not not warfare and destruction and hatred, right? I, I, those are things I don't like, and I hope you don't like them either. They're, they're not good things. Um, it's important to have boundaries. That Neptune is in Pisces, so you want to love people you don't necessarily agree with, but not necessarily let them have a huge energy in your life at this time because in order to bring out the things that are good for the collective you might have to set boundaries with the collective on what you're willing to put up with or where you're going to spend your time right um you got that saturn that's also there in pisces and that saturn is represents time so you you want to respect your own time in order to build the things that you want to do while Mercury is retrograde in Capricorn. Yes. So a couple of things that I have in mind that I've been doing for this season, um, kind of leading up to the winter solstice. Uh, I might do another video then, but uh, just in case, uh, I'm going to throw some things out there. So. Uh, I went over to a friend's house last night. I'm going to post uh, pictures at the beginning of the video. We made some Christmas wreaths and I went out. We just had some storms, so I went out and found some downed branches. I don't like to cut down 
trees because there's enough of that in the world. Um, but I will pick up branches that are offered to me by nature. So we made wreaths. Uh, wreaths and Christmas trees come from the Germanic parts of Europe and they would take these evergreen branches, right? The, thing, the trees that are still living even through the winter. Um, they were big on the tree of life. So, and they're not the only culture. Um, and hopefully the cultures where that traditional can remember, you know, that meaning of the tree of life. And decorate it and make it festive and you bring that into your space to remind you that life goes on, right? There's these evergreen trees that are still alive. So we did that. Um, you can, that's an activity you can do. We also did witches bottles, which is more of a, um, British Isles. I don't know what to call them area of the world anymore because Ireland is its own country and Scotland's still in England's sphere, but there's a lot of people who want to be, uh, independent there too. So that part of the world where the, the Gaelic people were, um, they had a custom called witches bottles. So they would take an empty bottle and you fill it with things that are both, uh, protective and that support your intention. So we made our intentions because I feel like the Sagittarius new moon is a great time to make intentions for the coming year. Um, the Celtic year started at Samhain, the end of, uh, or kind of more the very beginning of November. And so the Sagittarius moon is a great time to be making intentions. So we did our intentions. We gathered a bunch of stuff to put in these bottles. Um, salt is a really uh, traditional element to put in there. Salt draws things to you. It also protects, like um, if you think about something like sauerkraut, keeps out the bad microbes so that the good ones can thrive. Um, and we used the Himalayan pink salt, but the jet, the like chips. So jaggedy things like the jaggedy salt, like kosher salt is another one that would be good. Um, little chips of uh, pretty stones uh, to ground in like your nice intentions. But the jagged shape helps dispel, break up any negativity. So you can put that in there. I put in herbs from the past year, things that were flowery like rose petals, rosebuds, and calendula blossoms, dried, dried ones. You don't want them to mold in there. Um, and I had, I put hops in mine. So, cause I sometimes have trouble sleeping. So that I'm like intending good sleep cause hops is good for that. It's, um, Niferic, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, helps you sleep. That's why beer makes you so sleepy. Cause all, all beer these days is made with hops. And you could put in any other things, little pebbles you found. We put in, uh, some rosemary, put in some, uh, dried lichen. Uh, nature type of things, garden kind of things. You can put anything that would support your intention. And then we tied kind of a strap around it with some ribbon so it can hang it up somewhere. Um, if you're looking for more like protective energy, it could be near windows or doors. Um, it could be over your bed. It could be somewhere that is both protective and that you will see it every day so that you will remember your intentions throughout the coming year. It's kind of a spell casting bottle. All right. So um, whatever holidays you celebrate, I hope you have good ones. My plant friend that I want to do is uh, calendula. Uh, it's used a lot in formulas for digestion. It's time of year we're eating more fibrous food, more heavy like treats and things. Um, and that calendula can help stimulate the digestion and um, has carminative properties. So uh, any carminatives, I guess, would be good. And then for stones, um, kind of wanted to stay with fiery energy. So um, garnet is a good one that's got that fiery red dragon energy. I didn't mention that, but uh, there's kind of this dragon energy that's been going on for the last, since the eclipses, I guess, uh, really since the eclipses last spring. 
there's been a lot of dragon energy moving back and forth. And in some of the uh, paintings of Our Lady of Guadalupe, she's uh, standing on the serpent head. And I like to think that the serpent energy is more of a feminine energy. And I know Christianity likes to like step on it and uh, kind of control it because it's, it's associated more with pagan spirituality. But I think that it's also helpful, the garden, the dragon energy is a garden, gar, what Mercury, guardian energy that's protecting like your most sacred gifts, whatever those are for you. And uh, also your passion of what you do in the world. Um, dragons were often seen as protective in a lot of ancient cultures. So I think that energy goes along with it. Maybe, uh, you know, the, the Christianity, uh, our mother and the, uh, dragon, feminine dragon energy can kind of make friends. Uh, a lot of time has passed. And so the garnet, uh, also goes with the, it's a Scorpio world stone that goes with Venus, whatever you're trying to draw into your life. I think I'm just going to leave it at that garnet. I was going to mention something else, but this is feeling more and more like that garnet is a good choice. Um, but any fiery stone that you want to put on your altar this month. And it's a good time to clean your altar if your altar is like mine. I, I like to put a lot of things on my altar as I get them to kind of bless them. So I put my uh, dying projects. I put gifts for people. I put all kinds of stuff on there. It's a good time for me to clean it off and dust it all. Put some clean cloth on there. Um, to put things on. So I encourage you to clean up your altar and start a new one to put ground in this energy that we're putting our attentions out for the new year. All right, take care y'all and I will talk to you again soon. Maybe for the winter solstice, maybe just for the next full moon. All right, bye-bye.